Hi hey everyone, this is the Module 1 Lesson 14 Homework Help video. Uh, parents, if you're watching, good news. Um, other than this first little question here, what we're going to be doing today is the standard long division algorithm. So at last, we can use the skills that uh, we all learned in elementary school. What this first question is asking you to do is to draw place value disks on the chart to solve it, and what this does is this is going to show you why long division works, and that's the well, that was the idea of today's lesson to understand why long division works the way it does. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, we have five point two one two four one divided by three, um, and first thing we need to do is we need to model that on the place value chart, like so. I'm going to draw five ones, two tenths four hundredths, and one thousandth. Now, unlike in addition and subtraction, where I'm going to start from, where I start from the smallest place value, here in division, I'm going to start from the largest place value. So I'm going to start with the ones. And hopefully it'll be clear why we, we begin that way. So five ones. I'm going to divide those five ones into, into groups of three. Um... Like that. I could also divide it into three groups, but I think it's a little clearer if I divide it into groups of three. And that's, that's what I'm going to be doing the entire time here. So I can make one group of three. So I, I actually have two leftovers that I'm going to figure out what I, what I need to do with. But how do I show this over here in the uh, standard algorithm of division? Or what? us older folks know of as long division. Well, over here, I can make one group of three out of the five ones. So in the ones place, I'm going to mark it as one. And I, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to place the decimal point um, so that I can keep track of what I'm doing. And the next thing I'm going to show in the long division is that one group of three there equals three ones like this. So one times three, so what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the one by the number I'm putting in each group, three, and that's three. And then what I do is I subtract to find the remainder, which is two. And over there, on the other side, we, we do see, I've underlined them in blue, two that are left over. Now what do I do with them? Um, they can't just sit there, so I'm actually going to be trading these into tenths. And two ones equals twenty tenths. So what I'm going to need to do is draw a lot. There's ten, fifteen, twenty. So I've traded those two ones into twenty tenths. So now I have 22 tenths in all to make groups of 3 with. Um, and over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down this 2. And you'll notice that I'm, when I'm that's from the tenths place. So what I'm actually showing there is that I have 22 tenths. Um, because if I think about the decimal points continuing down, um, that's what I'm showing, that I had five ones, I've used three of the ones, and then I'm trading the other two ones into tenths for 22 tenths in all. So let's make some groups of three. Let's see how many I can make. One, two, three, four, five, six, and right, I'm going to have to connect some of these. Let's see, here's like that. There's another group of three. So I've made seven groups of three. Well, let's mark that over here. I have seven groups of three, and I've used then 21 tenths in all. And I subtract to find the remainder, which from my drawing is obvious, it's one. And then I am going to trade that one in. Oop, I'm getting ahead of myself. I should do it over here first. I'm going to take this one that's remaining, I'm going to trade it in for hundredths. Um, One-tenth is equal to how many hundredths? Well, anytime we're trading on the place value chart, it's going to be tens. So one-tenth 
is worth one is worth ten hundredths. So it looks like now I have fourteen hundredths. Let's do that over here. I've brought down the four, and lo and behold, I also have fourteen hundredths there. So again, I'm going to go through the same procedure. I'm going to make groups of three. One, two, three, and four. I've made four groups of three, and I, it looks like I have two remaining. So let's mark it down. Four. And then 4 times 3 is 12. And I subtract. That leaves me with 2 remaining. Um, just like before. I'm going to take these two remainders, and I'm going to trade them to, for thousandths. Those two hundredths are going to be how many thousandths? They're going to be 20 thousandths. Alright, let's see if that fits. Um, what I have there is I now have a total of 21 thousandths, the one I started with and the 20 I just traded for. If I bring down this one, look, look, 21 thousandths. How many groups of three can I make? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So seven times three equals twenty-one. Twenty-one minus twenty-one equals zero. I had no leftovers over here on the other side, and I have no leftovers here. It all fits together. Let's make sure my answers are the same. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to count up how many groups I made. Remember, I circled those in red. So let's see. I made one group here. I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four hundredths. And seven thousandths. So, you know, we can't forget about my decimal point. So on both sides, I have done 5.241 divided by 3 and found that it equals 1.741. Long division is just showing all of that complicated work on the place value chart. Um, let's try a problem uh, that's just the division together. I want you to try part B and I want you to try to draw it out, um, but I think hopefully we've done it enough there that you see how it works and if, you're, if they find that confusing, it's okay if you get stuck to just do the long division, but give it the drawing a try first. So here this problem is asking us to solve using the standard algorithm, um, and that just means use long division, which we've been practicing. So let's get this set up. 0 0.64 divided by 4. I need to place my decimal point. And how do we get started here? I'm do doing 0 0.64 divided by 4. Well, we always start in the largest place. 4 goes into 0, 0 times. I could have just skipped over the 0 place here, and in fact, I, I had started recording it with it that way. But I decided it's important for us to talk about what to do if you encounter zeros. So, zero, 4 goes into 0, 0 times, and then we multiply... Um, the number that we are dividing with, the divisor, and we, the first digit of the quotient there. So 0 times 4 equals 0, and 0 minus 0 equals 0, and I bring down the 6 into the, from the tenths place. Now 4 goes into 6 tenths, 1, so we can make one group of 4 there. 1 times 4 equals 4, uh, and I subtract, 6 minus 4 equals 2. Bring down in the hundredths place. Um, so I have 24 there. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking at how many times does this number 4 go into this number, 24. Um, sometimes people get mixed up and they think they're looking uh, just here, and they might say one again, because like, ah, oh, it goes into the hundreds place once, but then they're forgetting about these two 
tenths that they have to split up somehow. So there's actually 24 hundredths remaining after the four f went into the six there in the tenths place. So um, four goes into 24 six times. Whoops. Six times four is 24. And I subtract, and I end up with zero. Um, if I had to continue, if there was a remainder there, what could I bring down from there, do you think? Hmm. Well, remember that there's always secret zeros. Um, so if we did need the thousandths for something, we could always bring down a zero in the thousandths place. But we don't in this problem. So that, that's how you solve that one. That's a pretty basic one. There's a couple on there that are a little more challenging. But I want you to give them your best shot. Um, this is a great one to have family members help you with if you're watching alone because um, most adults are going to remember how to do this. And we're doing it exactly the same way that they learned at this point. Um, the, I, I would like you to try the two word problems. The two word problems are both division problems. Um, that's what we've been studying. I want you to be careful on the second one. The second one is, is a two-part problem. There's going to be an operation other than division in there. You're going to have to do something else and divide. So look at that one carefully. Don't just jump in and start dividing numbers up. All right? Uh, let me know if you need any more help with this. Thanks.